Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. The Holy Spirit is the key to the empowered Christian life. He will add divine energy to all that you do for God. And once you learn to partner with the Holy Spirit in prayer, your prayer life will never be the same. That's what I'm going to be teaching on right now. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. When I felt like the burden was more than I could hold. When the whispers of worry overwhelm my soul. You never left me alone. You were there all alone. You are faithful. heart be afraid you are faithful I know you're not gonna change you are faithful So what does it mean to pray in the Holy Spirit? This is what the scripture says. Jude chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. But you, beloved, keep yourselves, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Now, to pray in the Holy Spirit 
is more than just praying in tongues. Praying in tongues comes about as a result of praying in the Holy Spirit, but praying in the Holy Spirit is so much deeper. Once you learn to pray in the Holy Spirit, your prayer life is completely transformed. I know sometimes that when people go to pray, they testify to losing that divine willpower or that spiritual energy. They run out of things to pray. They run out of passion for prayer. And they run out of passion for the things of God. This happens because people are human. Of course, we have emotions. We have physical bodies. We have the ability to get tired. We have the ability to get distracted. This is why praying in the Holy Spirit is so important. He adds that divine energy, that divine movement to your spiritual life. To pray in the Spirit is to desire in agreement with heaven, to speak aloud those petitions which originate in the will of the Father. True prayer in the Spirit begins in union with God. Praying in the Holy Spirit is praying in harmony with the will of the Holy Spirit, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is to allow Him to take over your being as you pray. It is to surrender to that flow. It is to surrender to His will as He speaks aloud those desires, as He moves you toward the will of God. I'll never forget. I was ministering in Florida, and it was a powerful weekend of ministry, but I'll never forget one single moment that just stands out in my mind. So I'm walking into the church, and as I'm walking into the church, I'm greeted by several people, one of whom was paralyzed on one side of her body. And as she greeted me, she had a smile on her face, and I noticed the smile, and I noticed that she was using a cane. Her movement seemed very difficult for her. So I get into the service. I began to preach. Now, usually, I minister to the sick at the end of the service or toward the end of the service, but this time was different. As I'm preaching, suddenly I hear myself interrupting me while I'm preaching. It was as if I was a third party standing by watching as I changed directions. Now, this isn't to say that I wasn't in control of my physical capacities. I was. But there was some flow. There was, there was something that clicked. There was a stirring in my heart. And it flowed so naturally, it was almost as if someone else was making the movement for me and speaking the words for me. Of course, as I said, I was in full control. But this flow that took over was so natural that I sensed that there was another who was helping me to move in that direction. And I could hear myself calling for the lady from the lobby. And I began to declare that she was going to be healed. Now, I don't say this person is going to be definitely healed unless God is speaking to me in that moment. But in that moment, I knew my faith was stirred. I had enough faith to interrupt myself while preaching. She walks up as she approaches the platform. I began to step down to the altar. I laid hands on that woman and right there in front of everyone, she began to have movement restored to her body. That paralysis began to loose her. We have the footage, actually, of this happening. And I'll never forget that collective gasp that came over the crowd as they witnessed this miracle that God had performed. I was just as shocked as all of them. I saw this woman, and all of this culminated in her dancing and jumping as the worship team played. There was praise that erupted all throughout the room. And I'll never forget that moment and moments like it, because in moments like that, there's just this flow. It, it was as if the Holy Spirit and I were moving as one. Oneness, as I am describing it here, is that flow of the Spirit that is so natural that you don't even know you're flowing. It's obedience inspired from such depth that you're not even aware that you're obeying. In moments like those, there is no gap of time between when the Spirit speaks and you respond. It just is. Move your hand, shift your eyes, tilt your head. It's so very natural. There is no thought given, no mechanics to be forced. It's just like that. When you realize oneness with the Spirit, it's as though you are a member of a great body and the Spirit is the mind that controls even the most subtle of movements. Your movement 
becomes His movement. Your intent dissolves in God's will. Your presence and His presence become indistinguishable from one another. Indeed, you are joined with the Lord, and in that union, you find the beginning of true prayer. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 says this, The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. So the Holy Spirit is the one who produces this desire in you. The Holy Spirit produces the desire to evangelize. He produces that desire to worship. He produces the desire to live holy. He produces the desire to pray. Everything that is spiritual, all desires that are of God, are birthed in and by the person of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit does, in fact, pray for you. Let me show you something that's powerful. You may have heard this verse before, but I want to point out a couple things to you that I haven't really heard focused on all that much. Look at this. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 28 say this. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Now, I want you to notice first and foremost that the Holy Spirit does, in fact, pray for you. I don't think we give this thought enough of our attention. I don't think we truly appreciate this reality. The Holy Spirit prays for you. The Holy Spirit knows you better than anyone else knows you. The Holy Spirit knows your thoughts. The Holy Spirit knows your setbacks. The Holy Spirit knows your past. The Holy Spirit knows your flaws, your insecurities, your doubts, your fears. The Holy Spirit knows everything about you. So, the one who knows you like no one else knows you, prays for you like no one else can pray for you. This is what it means to pray in the Holy Spirit. To allow that flow of the Holy Spirit's prayer life to give divine movement and energy to your prayer life. The Holy Spirit prays for you. Now, we don't know what we should pray for, but the Holy Spirit does. In those moments when we lack the energy or we lack the knowledge or we lack the words, the Holy Spirit can make up for all of those things. One of the frustrating points of prayer for many people is that they feel they're the ones who have to work for the connection. They feel they're the ones that have to work for an audience with God. They feel they're the ones that have to supply the passion and the desire. I'm here to tell you that in fact it is the Holy Spirit who supplies the words. The Holy Spirit who supplies the desire. The Holy Spirit who supplies that energy, that passion, that fervency. The Holy Spirit is the one who prays. And to be caught in the movement of the Holy Spirit's prayer life is the essence of praying in the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to work it up on your own. You don't have to try to establish that connection with God because you're already connected to Him by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings this divine breath of life to your prayer life. This is how you become a person of prayer. How do you pray in the Holy Spirit? You simply surrender to that flow. How do you surrender to that flow? You simply trust and obey. The one key to praying in the Holy Spirit is simple, surrender. And the way you surrender is to trust and obey. Just trust Him and do what He says. How do you know what He says? Look to His Word. And once you know what His Word declares, just trust Him enough to obey. Oneness with the Holy Spirit is obedience toward the Holy Spirit. Oneness with the Holy Spirit is obedience toward the Holy Spirit. And eventually what begins to happen is that line becomes indistinguishable. It becomes so natural. It's not rigid. It's not something that's forced. It becomes a natural movement. When I first began to drive, 
I remember my movements were very rigid. My turns were very sharp. My braking was very sudden. But as I practiced the habit of driving, my driving became almost a second nature to where now I don't really have to put much thought into the mechanics. It's just a fluid movement as I drive. In the same way, prayer at first may feel mechanical. Prayer at first may feel forced. But as you begin to succumb to the flow of the Spirit through surrender, your prayer life becomes natural in a supernatural way. So the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings. Now I want you to think about this. Groanings, groanings, groanings. This means He prays for you with passion. He prays for you with fervency. The Holy Spirit prays for you with more love and passion than would a mother use while praying for her children. Think about the way a grandparent would pray for a grandchild. Think about the way a father would pray for a daughter. A mother would pray for a son. A sibling would pray for a sibling. Think about the way that people who love each other pray. And now I want you to think about the fact that the Holy Spirit knows you better than anyone else knows you and loves you more than anyone else loves you. Therefore, He prays for you with more passion than anyone else can pray for you. He prays for you with groanings. If you could see into the spirit realm and you could see the Holy Spirit praying, you would see tears streaming down His face. You would hear His voice boom and shake the room. I dare even say that you would see the Holy Spirit pounding His fist on the floor as He prayed for you with passion, with groanings, with deep desire. That's who the Holy Spirit is. That's how He prays for you. And then the Scripture says that He prays for us believers in harmony with God's own will. This means that as He's praying for you, He's pulling you into the will of God. He's he's shaping your heart. He's bending your heart, inclining your heart toward God's Word. He is causing you to have His desires. He is causing you to think His thoughts. He is causing you to act out what He is wanting deep within. And as you surrender to this flow, you begin to find yourself established in the will of God. It's so much simpler than ritual. It's so much simpler than religion. It's so much simpler than checking off this list and doing it the correct way. Some people become a distraction to themselves in prayer by wondering constantly if they're doing it right. My goodness, just surrender. Just trust and obey. And this flow becomes your flow. And sometimes you'll notice it. Sometimes without you even attempting to bring your spiritual life back on course, you'll just suddenly have a burst of divine energy. Suddenly you'll have this desire to correct something in your life. What do you think that is? What do you think it is that randomly brings you back, that randomly causes you to do self-evaluation and rule out things? What do you think it is that causes you to check your pride, your doubt, and all of those hang-ups of the flesh? That's the Holy Spirit in you praying for you. And that prayer is effective. That prayer impacts your life. That prayer begins to change you. Even when you're not thinking about Him, He's praying for you. I'm so glad that I don't have to trust my own ability to be spiritual, but that I can trust His ability to make me spiritual. When you surrender, you're truly praying in the Holy Spirit. And when you're truly praying in the Holy Spirit, You are truly praying. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I lift this one to you now. Holy Spirit, teach us to surrender. Show us how. Only you can do this. Only you can remove the distractions of the mind. Only you can calm the turmoil in the emotions. Holy Spirit, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would speak to us, correct us, set us on the right course, bend us, incline us toward the will of God. Give us a love for the Word. Give us a love for holiness and righteousness. Give us a passion for prayer that we might flow with you. In the name of Jesus. 
I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. There's someone watching me. There's a, there's a, on your left hand right here um, by the knuckles, there's, there's, I see like a redness. God's healing, whatever that is. I don't know completely what that is. The Lord hasn't revealed that, but I can see it's being healed right now in the spirit. I thank you, Father, for your healing anointing now flowing across this room through that camera, touching that one receiving in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. You know, I don't have to specifically mention what your ailment is. When the healing anointing is flowing, you can just receive it by faith. And I want you to do that. And that is it for the lesson. I do want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. I encourage you to do this because in the next few years, you watch, tech companies are going to censor the church like never before. So make sure you and I are directly connected so that when the time comes to make the shift to other platforms that you're on our emailing list so that we can reach out to you. So don't put our relationship in the hands of a tech giant. Let's use wisdom here. Connect with us. Join the online community. Go right now at davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Join that community. All it is is a membership that's free. It's online. You sign up and you're just going to start getting emails with the lessons in them. And this way it comes directly to you. and We don't have to go through any other platform. It's you and I directly connected. So join the Spirit family today. I want to read your comments now. And these comments come from last week's teaching, Persistent Prayer, How to Partner with God. One of the questions people often ask is, if God is sovereign, why do we need to pray? God is just going to do whatever He wants to do. What's the point of Him having us pray? Well, I address that exact question, as well as several others in regards to persistent prayer, on this particular lesson. So I encourage you, go back and watch this. Persistent Prayer, How to Partner with God. It will really shift the way you see your relationship with God as it pertains to prayer. And while you're at it watching it, be sure to, make, to subscribe to us, youtube.com slash encounter TV, or if you're watching from our various other online platforms, make sure you're following us, that you're connected with us. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribing. And if you'd like, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now, and I may read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church. So here are the comments coming from last week's teaching. Reagan Paul writes, I have been asking God for an encounter for a long time. I felt like giving up today until you taught me the difference between desperation in prayer and faith in prayer. Thank you. Jennifer Espinilla writes, Thank you, Brother David. I feel blessed every time I listen to your teaching. It helps me a lot in my spiritual walk and gives me more revelation every day. Listening to your teachings increases my persistence in seeking God and makes me eager to know more about God. Thank you for this ministry. God bless you. Linda Winkle writes, Well, thank you. This teaching is really helpful. I thank God for this lesson. Yesterday, we were thinking, how do we keep on praying? Why is this happening? And where is the answer to prayer? Now I know what persistent prayer is and will keep praying. God is good. And the final comment comes from our friend Carla Laskowski, who writes, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3.15. I can see this Bible verse in you, Pastor David. Thank you for going after God's heart and seeking for His Spirit, feeding us with spiritual meat by your teachings every week, and for your books so we can grow in Him and share these teachings with others. All glory to God. I will say it again. I'm so thankful and blessed for David Diga Hernandez, Stephen Moctezuma, and this ministry. I pray our Father in heaven will keep blessing you and increasing your anointing. Well, thank you, Carla. That's very kind of you. We give all glory to God. I know you do too, and I thank you for your encouraging words. And Carla's right. We need to pray that God continues to expand this ministry. Now, you and I, I think we're called to do something together. I'm talking to you watching. It's not an accident that you're watching this. I believe in divine providence. I believe God has appointed this moment. Right now, we are joining hands with believers from all around the world who have the same heart. If you have a heart for souls, you have a heart to win the lost, 
If you want to see more people delivered, more people healed, more people saved, more leaders and ministers raised by the teaching of God's Word, then let's partner together. Let's do this together. Because remember, together we can do more than we could ever do alone. Don't do it by yourself. Don't say, well, I'm going to try to make a difference on my own. No, join hands with the thousands of people all around the world who support this ministry. And let's multiply our impact by joining together. I want to ask you a favor. I'm asking you now to ask the Holy Spirit. Right now, just say, Holy Spirit, do you want me to partner with that ministry? Just ask Him. Let Him speak to your heart. And if you partner with us today, just know that you're going to be helping us to produce all the media content that you see, run all of the live streams that you see, host all of the events that you might attend, and it also helps to fund the Holy Spirit School, which is an online Bible training program that we give away absolutely free. Plus, your support helps us to keep rising above the big tech censorship. There's no stopping God, and we're using wisdom to stay ahead of the curve, but we need your partnership now more than ever so that we can continue to see this ministry grow and expand and reach people all around the world with the gospel. So if you partner with me today, listen to this. This is a $10 a month partnership. If you partner with us at $10 or more a month, we're going to give you access to all of the partner Zoom calls. These are exclusive just for our ministry partners. You're going to get event seat reservations. You're going to get a 10% discount on all ministry product or off all ministry product. We're going to send you a beautiful Dove lapel pin so that you can wear it and show your support of the ministry. And you will get an exclusive email just for our partners. There are other benefits to being a partner, but think about this. $10 a month, all of those wonderful benefits, helping us fund the media, the live streams, the events, the Holy Spirit School, and knowing that you're helping to make impact all around the world, plus you get to consume the content for yourself. Guys, there's no better way to invest $10 a month. And you may be thinking, well, it's just my $10. It doesn't matter. Listen, if just half the people who watch these videos were to partner with us, we could not only multiply our efforts by 10, we could multiply our efforts by 100. So don't count yourself out. Don't, don't say, oh, it's just my $10 or, oh, maybe things are a little uh, rough right now. Look, we just trust God. God will take care of every need. Step out in faith and do this. I promise you, you're not going to regret doing something for God. Now, if you partner with us at $30 or more a month, you're going to get all of those benefits, the seat reservations, the discount, all of those things. Plus, you're going to get your selection of any one of these four books, Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, and my new book, Praying in the Holy Spirit. You get to choose one of those at the $30 a month level, and we'll send it to you as a gift. Now, if you do the $100 or more, you get double the discount off all the apparel. That's a 20% discount at the $100 level. Plus, you don't get one or two or three. You get all four of the books in the book catalog. But we want you to check the website. Make sure the partnership program is up to date as these videos get older. Sometimes we change the partnership program over time. But go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Join our army of supporters. Join the thousands of believers around the world. Let's link hands as we have the same heart for souls and for raising kingdom leaders, go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter. And if you can't do that, go right now then and go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a one-time gift. Do it today. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and watch what God will do as we partner together. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, Nothing is impossible with God. This message was taken from my latest book, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Order now at Amazon.com. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.